All right, so this is, uh, what I'm gonna do is walk you guys through the use of the spreadsheet to cost out units. Um, so the challenge with fantasy for Wars of Orcs and Dwarves, right, is that if we want to not have to prescribe some background where I can pre-point all the armies, there has to be a way for you to point armies that you have, right? So this spreadsheet was yep. designed to let you figure out what the cost per base is for different kinds of units and then multiply that by the number of bases, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share the spreadsheet. Um, uh, maybe I'm not. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, let, me, let me do this again. Let me say, zoom, share screen. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna share the spreadsheet and I'm just gonna walk through the various parts of it and then how I might use this to, to point out uh, a force, right? So the top here, this is the part that I expect um, users will play with, okay? Right. Um, and and th there are some cells that are gray. Uh, at some point, I'll lock those cells, but for now, the gray ones, uh, the gray italics are ones that I don't expect people to play around with, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, that's, that's sort of this part, and this is where you'll build your force um, and get the point value of your force. So you might want it to be 300 points, 250 points, whatever the, you know, whatever we end up deciding on, right? So the other thing I did uh, in conjunction with Dave here is down this side, this blue chart, which is really just for me and for reference. I, I you know, it's there because it's interesting, but I don't expect most players to look at it. But these are the basic uh, race types uh, in, in fantasy, as far as I can tell, right? So we have gnomes, dwarves, gray dwarves, meaning evil ones, right? I guess, uh, kobolds, goblins, orcs, you go all the way down this list, right? And, and, you know, down to yetis and owl bears and, and griffins, right? And, and this, this, uh, this, uh, letter here is sort of a broad category, right? It runs from A to AC. Um, and, and this provides a reference, so you can see that gnomes and dwarves and gray dwarves are of the same general category, right? Orcs, great orcs, and hobgoblins are of the same general category. And, and those categories then are echoed over here in this yellow chart, right? Which says, all right, so this is category A, so that's gnomes, dwarves, gray dwarves. Their median aim, so, or marksmanship in Oz, right? But aim is, I should have used aim to begin with, but it's, it's just shorter. Uh, this is, um, is five, and five mean median, right? So that's the middle value, which means uh, it can be four, five, or six, right? Yep. Median melee is seven, so it can be six, seven, or eight. Median resolve is seven, right? And then the reaction type for now, uh, right now I'm, I'm referencing uh, the, the, just for my own clarity, I'm referencing the reaction test charts from Oz. These actually have different names now. Um, like I think this one's aggressive and gillikins are swarming. Quadlings are reliable, I think. But anyway, so they have different names in Woodland and this will be you know, marked up. But for my, because I'm very familiar with the reaction test charts for Oz, right? This helps me sort of keep track in my mind that dwarves are gonna behave like Winkies in Oz in terms of, you know, they like to charge and close the camp, right? This challenge rating is an idea that Dave brought in from D&D. And this basically says, if you take these values and you use the formula that they use to sort of compute the cost, how do these stack up against each other, right? So, you know, a, a gnome or a dwarf unit is kind of a challenge rating of 6.5, where, you know, a high elf unit is an 8.25. Uh, it, it doesn't really mean anything in the game other than it helped me sort of make sure that, um, I wasn't overpowering one more than I wanted to or whatever. Movement yeah. type, this says that they walk, fly, or hop. So the difference is walking, of course, is walking. Hop allows me to, uh, to, to skip over intermediate terrain pieces like walls and things. Yeah. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't allow me to ignore woods, but it does allow me to ignore essentially linear obstacles. And then fly uh, down here somewhere like uh, griffins. Right, those allow me to just essentially ignore terrain, right? Um, right. And, and then what I did is I put in some special abilities, right? So 
Uh, there's this thing I call non-doctrinal uh, something. Uh, so what this uh, non-doctrinal force tax, right? Non-doctrinal force tax. So this says uh, for gnomes, dwarves, gray dwarves, right? I pay a tax for missile units more than one, right? So my brigade can have one missile unit. If I have a second missile unit, so more than one, that one costs me 25% more. The next one costs me 50% more. The next one costs me 75% more. So the idea is this allows me to sort of reflect the accepted canon with respect to, hey, you know, elves have a lot of bows, dwarves don't, right? Orcs do this, that. So this non-doctrinal force tax is a way to sort of enforce that without saying you can't do it, right? Yeah. It just says, look, if you're gonna do that, um, it, it's gonna cost you more. And, you know, clearly players can relax or, or make that worse later, right, once they have their hands on the rules, if, if, if this canonical vision of fantasy doesn't match their vision of fantasy. Right? And then there's other things in here like resistance to magic. Um, uh, here are halflings and ducks, right? They get to, to, to negate one point of reach advantage, right? For, you know. um, uh, here we've got beast men and stuff. They can't wear very heavy armor. Okay, whatever. So, so those are some things. Uh, this is a working list. I think this, this list is pretty good. I had my Oracle, Dave, sort of go through them. He said that this is okay. Um, all right, then this one says, uh, this one has weapon costs, right? So this one says, uh, melee weapon has a cost of zero and no ranges, right? Pistols have a, have a cost of one and they have a short range of two and a long range of four. And then there's this notion of strong penetration, right? So crossbows and light cannons. What strong penetration allows you to do is negate one point of armor advantage, right? Because they have, you know, high penetration, right? Crossbows could go through tight armor. Um, right. And then so, and this is the cost, right? So, so, uh, and then all of that is sort of assembled. Uh, oh, and then, uh, uh, and then armor here in the middle, this says if I call the unit armored, <coughs> it costs me this much to add to my unit cost. And this is, uh, this is an, add, an add to the speed of the unit, right? So mm -hmm. it'll be kind of a, a, a median speed, but if I make them heavy armor, they're gonna lose two inches off that speed up here, right? Yep. So now all of that gets assembled down here. Category A has a chart, right? And it says, this is sort of my median values, right? That said, I have a median value aim of five, uh, a median melee value of seven. And all of this then, becomes what is used to populate this chart when I'm, when I'm filling out the unit. So all of what I've shown so far sort of is, is the underlying math and assumptions and, and uh, uh, design ideas associated with how you, you create units, right? Now what I would do in this chart is I would say, look, I'm gonna create a unit that is uh, great orcs. And, and, and everything that's listed down in this chart it is here, right? And it's a data element. So don't type anything in. What you do is you click the little arrow and you select the race. And, and this category then gets filled in. And then the, light, the, the uh, permitted values for these other things gets created as data validation, right? So you, you can see now it's great orcs. Their aim can be two, three, or four. I select that, right? My melee can be, I don't know, five, six, or seven. So you can see when it was whatever it was before, uh, you know, now I've got an invalid value and I, I, I'm going to say, look, I want my great orcs to have the best melee they can. Uh, I'm going to give them sort of a, a weapon, you know, spears or whatever with a reach of two. I'll give them a resolve of six uh, and an elan of seven, right? And I'm going to give them medium armor. And, and that's all based on looking at the figures, right? So I say, look, the figures kind of look like they've got kind of a long reach weapon and reaches one, two, or three, right? And then you can see that it figured out based on, you know, you see this long V lookup up here. It figured out based on the median speed plus the, the speed modifier based on the, the, the armor and everything else, right? It figured out what the speed of this unit will really be in the game, right? And then I can say, look, I, I want this unit to have, I don't know, staff slings, right? And what it comes out to is it says, my cost per base is 16.2 points. You can see it's a very long formula that figures that out, right? But it says, hey, it's 16.2 points per base. I multiply by five bases. 
uh, it modifies that and uh, uh, and I think it yeah and then there's no rounding up right so it keeps this to one digit so that says that this great orc unit with staff slings medium armor blah 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 uh, is a total point cost of 81 points okay and so if I was now pointing out my army I would fill in a row for each one of these units Right, and that would, and I could keep a running total down here that said, "Oh, my points are, are, you know, 200 points or 250 points or whatever the game master is allowed me to have." Right, and so that's how you use this. Right, so it's complex, I guess. Right, in terms of the construction of it, I'm on version seven, so there were a lot of formula errors initially, but it allows you to go in here and just figure out, okay, my next unit's going to be gnomes, uh, and their aim is going to be six. And uh, come on, fill it in. And their melee uh, is going to be five, and their reach will be one, and their resolve will be. They don't have a very good resolve, these gnomes. Um, and uh, and I'm going to give them light armor, and they have melee weapons only, so they're only 8.2 points, or 8.4 points, right? So essentially half as much as that great orc unit. And when I multiply by five bases, I get that. Now, say I only I wanted to say I can't afford 81 points. Okay, so I'm going to take make that unit only four bases. And now it's 64 points, and so that's how I use this. And and it even you know I have trolls here, dire animals. I use for just about everything, right? Dire bears, wolves, tigers. You can adjust the melee reach, etc., to make them you know bears maybe are better than wolves or whatever your your vision there is, right? Um, so uh, in this case. Um, but, but I, you still have an aim attribute for dire animals because you can imagine like dire bears that can throw honey pots or, or whatever. I don't know, whatever. So, uh, but there is actually, this is the one exception uh, to the plus one minus one to the median value. I've actually filled this in so you can create a dire animal with an aim of zero if like, you're like wolves and they have no missile weapon. So, um, so that's how you use this, right? That's how this is used to, to point out your army uh, so if the game master says, okay, you get 250 points, um, you can look at your forces and fill this in. Um, well, so can we'll, we'll, your yeah, munch can this. Um, with regard to aim, uh -huh. is it just dire animals? Like, well, I, my great orcs, I didn't give any of them missile weapons, so I just gave them zeros. I can't give them zeros, correct? You can't, <laughs> but the formula, if you put missile melee weapon only, the formula zeroes out the cost. Okay, the then you got that covered. So it's not, um, not used. Then I like how, because I think giant swing, you know, giant swing boulders ought to get penetration, but you just assign them, and they've got the effect of a light trebuchet. So for the right. weapon. Yeah, so, you know, uh, I, I wasn't sure, essentially, right, if you're throwing rocks or, or whatever, right, I figured, look, it probably falls into one of these categories. Right, yeah. and and I think for giants we actually use light trebuchet as the yeah uh, yeah. The, one of the things I'm I'm interested in is that that kind of looks really great for infantry type units, but what about ah. the, the the diversity of uh, cavalry? That yeah, so that's how you're. So one of the things that I'm working on, not for this Saturday's game, but the following one, is um, a unit of dwarves mounted on bears okay so i think that the the, the bears are also going to be a completely different proposition to um you know to, to guys mounted on ponies or something because you now in effect it's going to be a combination of a dire bear and a, you know, and a dwarf so how would we how would we figure that out yeah so i'm glad you asked that question right so so here's how I'm thinking about that, right? So here's this spreadsheet down here. This is your, your cavalry modifiers, right? So if I put a unit on ponies, right? And <clears throat> clearly it doesn't make sense to put owl bears on ponies, right? And there's probably not a figure that looks like that, but I guess you could, right? So, so the idea, if I have ponies, right? That says the speed is really, it's not additive, right? The, the speed of your cavalry unit is the speed of the mount, right? It's not the speed of the mount plus the riders. So here's yeah. your speed. Right, so if I'm unicorns, I have a speed of six. If I'm on some kind of pachyderms, right, giant frogs gives me a speed of two. Chariots are a speed of five. Um, and I guess you could modify that a little bit, you know, if the chariot's being drawn by, you know, 92 horses versus three, right, maybe you wanna fiddle with that, but, but that's basically, so, so if I say here, I'm cavalry, here's my mount, it's pachyderms of some sort, right? So my speed becomes four. It's a walking mount, right, as opposed to a flying mount or a hopping mount. 
And by virtue of having this mount, it adds something to my melee value, right? So if I'm riding wild boars, I get to add one. So that says melee add. So I get to add one to the melee value of the unit. I get to add something to the armor value. So pachyderms, for instance, I get to add one, uh, one level. So I would go from medium to, to heavy or heavy to very heavy because the mounts are themselves armored in some way. And then I add to the, so to the per base cost, right? So up above, we said, hey, this unit uh, is 16.2 points per base. Now what I'm gonna do is, now for every one of those bases cost me two points extra because I mounted them on boards. Um, right. And so I have to add that in, right? So we, we, we may play around with the melee add and the armor add, but I, I was trying to resist this idea of saying, if I mount a unit on horses, it's the sum of those things, because I'm not sure that that's, that's right, you know, because neither one of those things, they operate together better, but neither one of those things is operating separately, right? It's not a linear add to put two things together, right? So, so this is the way I was, and, and we may want to play around with, you know, hey, I don't think the melee add of putting guys on boards, on bears is enough. Maybe that should be a three. You want to be really careful about making these numbers too big. Remember, every one of these is, every number is a 10% add to your chance of doing damage to a game that's yes. already pretty bloody, right? So I tried to resist making these too big. So right now there's zero, one, two, or three with the only thing that's a three is a dragon. But the idea is that I'm adding to my per base cost. And so the idea behind this is I can take any kind of a unit I want. I can take a hippogriff and mount it on a dragon, right? And there's a way to point that out, right? And then uh, as we've noted, as we've been statting out forces for these playtest games, sometimes you end up with like, geez, I, I have four points I can't use, right? Or three points I can't use. So there's this notion of adds that I have in Oz and, and we've done in other games. And that is that, um, so if I have a magic user, I can convert him to a cleric and he gets to he change a wizard to a cleric and he gets the undead fear modifier, right? Which, which means um, if he's with a unit or near a unit or something that is facing undead, if you look up in the chart here, undead reduces your, your Elan and resolve by one uh, when they attack you or whatever. Um, yeah. I don't remember the exact uh, okay. uh, verbiage so, there. So but, but is the there cleric another, is, so is there another part of the, uh, another table that we fill in for cavalry then that, that gives us a, a drop down for mount? Um, so I was, yeah, I, I can, I can make, see, I, you see I made a page for cavalry. What I thought I would do is just copy this entire page over yes. and then add a column up here that said mount. That yeah, would figure so it would all that just out be for you. A, a, an extra drop down. Okay. I don't think it's, it's not that hard to do the math, but I'll, I, you know, what I'm going to do, like I said, is just, and I don't think I need an artillery table like I originally put in here because the artillery's here, right? Um, yeah. But I do think I was going to create an art, a cavalry tab where you could just have another drop down that lets you select the mount type, right? Yeah, that um, sounds like a good idea. Uh, or maybe I don't even need that. Maybe what I just need to do is add a no mount and have another column in here. So if I, if it's set, like if I have melee weapon only, I could have another one called mount that sets it to, um, you know, unmounted. Yeah, so you could, you could just have a, yeah, a, va a value you know, on foot or infantry or something. But right now, this is just sort of my focus in terms of how do I point things out? I can continue to evolve the spreadsheet, but, but this is, this is how for, for Saturday's game, this is how I pointed out the cabinet. Yes, uh, like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's a, a really good idea. No, it, it makes a lot of sense. And I think it would be better just having that one table where you can do your infantry and cavalry together by having that sort of drop down and um, having um, on foot uh, as a, a value for infantry. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I can do that. That's not, that's not too bad. When I get a chance, I'll, I'll update the spreadsheet. I just, every time I do that, I have to be very careful that I, I don't cause formulas to break um, yeah. because it is, there are cross references all over this page. And I actually got to learn some things about Excel that I didn't know before. So this, this, uh, this is kind of an interesting, uh, this, this, this row business. Um, it, it's actually filled in. There's another thing that uses this reference to, it, 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 you, you can actually get the row reference from a cell. And so as I added more tables in here, the row reference would automatically update. It was really kind of interesting. Um, 
right. Yeah, I'm learning a lot about Excel that I never wanted to know. So <laughs> now, now, how are you handling the non-doctrinal tax? Because it's a group. So yeah, you have to do that. You have to do that yourself, right? Um, okay. You just have to say, um, uh, yeah, I guess I could add a non-doctrinal tax column too that says this is non-doctrinal unit one, two, three, or four. Um, and it'll multiply the cost for you. I could actually. Yeah, that, you have to manually know that because you're doing a whole, you're not doing it by brigade, you're doing it by command. So right. the fact that I've got three archer units may not tell me jump off, you know, yeah, I'm on the saying, same brigade, you know. Yeah, that's, that's exactly my thinking, Dave, was I said I didn't want to add that into the table because the cost of this unit doesn't change. It's yeah. the cost of me adding it to my brigade that changes, yeah. right? And so that's something that I kind of think you have to do by hand because my intent is eventually to take any fantasy units that I have once I stat them out and I'm going to write the point value on the bottom of the bottom, the bottom, yeah. right? And so it'll be really easy for me to put a force together without having to go in the spreadsheet either, right? I can stand mm -hmm. on the table and just assemble bases until I get there. Um, but, yeah. Um, but anyway, so... So that's kind of where I'm going with this. Um, and this is what I've been using for our play tests. Um, uh, we haven't used any of these attributes yet because uh, we really haven't exercised some of the other forces like undead and, and other things yet. Right? Um, and I, again, moving forward, the intent for Wars of Orcs and Dwarves like Wars of Oz is that your brigade would be largely homogenous, right? So it's gonna be kobolds or orcs or whatever. And you're allowed to have one ally who can be something different um, yes. and that's sort of defined by category right so i'm an a b c d whatever brigade and i can have one thing from another category uh at most one of those things it doesn't cost me anything different but the idea that is that you know if i have a duck brigade right then if i can add one zombie unit to it right? yeah so i think that's what that's one of the things that we're we're doing this saturday is that we're being a bit more structured so we separated out you know goblins have their army list and orcs have theirs and we have a very defined orc and goblin command and we've only allowed people to sort of to take one pick from the you know, sort of from the mercenary other right. sort of other, other list and then my idea was uh for the for the next game which i think is only in a towards it towards the end of november um that we'd add in some magic users and some heroes and we maybe get a few more um, cavalry units together and then for the January game I'm hoping that I'll be able to put together at least a, a, a brigade of a completely different troop type um, nice. like Undead for us to, pl to play out. And, and for playtest purposes if you wanted to, to say well I know these guys look like dwarves but they're going to act like beastmen in this game right I mean we did a lot yeah. of that for Oz before the Oz figures existed, right? You know, I'd have English Civil War figures and call those Winkies or, or whatever, right? Just because we needed to play things. Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, uh, well, I've, I've got quite a few bits and pieces that I can, uh, that, that, that I, that I can draw on. So the other thing, um, so yeah, magic users, I think the rules for Oz will pretty much work, right? We may change some of the spell names to be less yeah. Ozzy. Um, on heroes, my thinking on that is, you know, sort of at the last minute when 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 Russ came up with the the Dorothy Tin Man uh, lion figures, right, as characters, uh, I needed to incorporate those into the rules. And it was nice that there were four of them, and there's four attributes for a unit, right? Marksmanship, uh, melee, uh, uh, elan, and resolve. And so what I did is I said, if you take this hero and you attach it to your unit, you get to add one to one of those things, right? So. Dorothy adds one to resolve, I think, and the lion adds one to lawn. The Tin Man adds one to melee, and the Scarecrow adds one to marksmanship, right? So, so I think that your heroes are going to sort of be like that, right? And so, but I might have a hero who who does two things, right? You know, Conan gets to add one to my Elon and uh, and melee or something, right? So, I I just I have a bias that says that. You know, one hero can be really heroic, but he's probably not going to defeat whole armies on the battlefield. It's the same bias that says, I don't understand why. I know I'm applying, trying to apply logic to fantasy games, right? Which is sometimes a slippery slope. But the, the idea that is that um, 
you know, a, a magic user has trouble killing one goblin in a dungeon, but I put him on the battlefield and he's wiping out whole units, right? And it, I, that's, that's always sort of bothered me a little bit, right? So you'll see that the magic users, like in Oz, have an effect, but they don't yeah. overpower the game, right? They're not, the units aren't just targets for magic users, right? They, they, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and that was the feel I was hoping for, and I think that's the feel I achieved in Oz, right? So that's kind of the same feel I hope to achieve here. Um, and so, um, but anyway, for heroes, I think the idea is that you'll buy a hero uh, based on uh, which of the four attributes or combination of the four attributes you want him to affect when he's attached to you. Right? So if he's going to affect one attribute, you know, he costs, I don't, I'm making it up now, three points. If he's going to affect two attributes, maybe it's seven points, right? And, and I have to think through the pointing, but, but that's the idea, right? So, um, and again, there probably, no hero will probably add more than one to any attribute just because you very quickly get to the asymptotes, right? One or ten, and, and that, that I think doesn't make the game feel very really good. So, yeah. um, well, <clears throat> my, 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 my thoughts was, and I, I like that idea that the that the heroes aren't you know, sort of overpowering, but I think that maybe there are two maybe there are two different types that we could use. So, when you have a um, no, the, the the guy who is just a magic user who, as you say, couldn't sort of struggles with half a dozen orcs um, in, you know, in a dungeon, then maybe that's a figure on a twenty five mil base that you just play, you know, place by the figure, but maybe you can also have um a hip sort of like a heroic base which is you no know, a sort of a you no know, a two you no know, a two inch base and for for that you can you consider that you've got the hero plus his bodyguard or entourage and it does sort of equate to an extra sort of twenty percent of the unit because it's not it's not just that guy. Oh, so so it, it would. So if I have a unit with five bases and I add that guy to it, now it's a unit with six bases. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. So, so possibly. I like that idea. I guess what happens if that base is all by himself? He just counts as one base for fighting, and he gets overwhelmed. Is that okay? You think people yeah, would like I guess that? So. Uh, okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm okay I, with that. I just don't want you know people to have. Space, if that's the last base left. So I think that maybe we want to, you know, we want to, uh, th there are some things that I'm working on for playtesting next, next time round. So for example, okay. I've, I, I've, I'm going to do a base that's a uh, that sort of dwarf, you no know, sort of dwarf king, um, up there being carried on a sort of throne of power. <laughs> and okay. for that, you would sort of think that, that, that he has got his personal half guard, you know, maybe 50 or 60, guys with his pers personal bodyguard and he would add some advantages but he would also i think sort of count as a as, as a combat base as 25 percent or 20 percent as good as uh, as a unit but we can try, try that out and sort of see if, see if it works yeah, yeah, yeah. So every time you add one of these things, of course, you're forcing me to think through the ramifications to the rules, right? So that's good. So yeah, I mean, I, I like that approach to say, you know, this is a heroic base. It's on a standard two by two and, and you know, you add him to a unit and he may affect the unit, some attribute, plus he's another base. I think yeah. that's fine. I just, I worry a little bit about, uh, you know, one heroic base out there that gets overwhelmed by a unit and I'm okay with that personally. I, yes. I worry a little bit that people won't like the fact that their, you know, uh, dwarf berserker base got got yeah. wiped out easily by, you know, a whole unit of, I don't know, uh, lizard men or something, right? Yeah. Again, yeah. I'm okay with that. And and again, my bias comes to, you know, when I was talking to the army combatives guys, the guys who design all the hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff, right? Yeah. All of yeah. those guys were like black belts in multiple different martial arts right and three animal kung fu and all the rest of that and yeah and yeah yeah their contention was that once you're outnumbered more than three to one it doesn't matter how good you are you're gonna lose right yeah and so or, or how good your sort of magic plus five sword of vocal slaying is yeah. yeah there's only there's only so many cans of spam you're gonna cut through right before you uh <laughs> yeah, before they yeah, get you yeah yeah, so. yeah. Well, I think all of these things they just need to be play tested, and mm -hmm. and if they work, they work, and if they don't, then um, this will go back go back to the drawing board. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, the, the, we had a lot of play testing on Oz. I think the basic mechanics are reasonably mature, right? We're just sort of picking around the edges now to make sure that it has a proper. Yeah. yeah. So what's going to be interesting on, so on Saturday is we're going to have a, a number of these units, which are on um, four inch by four inch bases, which are really four bases. Right. So that will give us a good opportunity to see, to see how that works. Yeah, so I'm a, I, again, you know, we've talked about this before, right? I'm a little concerned that about the bookkeeping. Not that it won't work, right? I'm just, I'm just, you know, players don't like to do. I, I don't, you know, you'd be surprised, right? I mean, when I started gaming, we were multiplying two-digit numbers and decimal points and things, and yeah. nobody cared. And now, yeah. if you tell somebody to do an add one, they complain that there's too much math, right? But yeah. uh, I think um, I just worry about the bookkeeping. I think there's ways to manage that, right? And so I'm okay with it, and I think it'll work. Yeah. I think that I've got I've got a I've got a mechanical player aid way which I you know which I'm also going to be trying out on Saturday which Good. I think is, is going to do that. So Good. in fact, we're not going to have any dice on the table. What I've um, I've made some some um, some triangles which have on e an, an equilateral triangle that has a, a one, two, and a three on e on each of the faces because. Um, because our bases represent four figures, then you can always, you, know, you either have uh, one casualty, two casualties, three casualties, or on the fourth, you remove the base. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So, 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 so rather than having um, dice for recording casualties carried over, we will have these triangles, and the face that is touching um, the back of the unit is the face that you read. And then for the things like the uh, dragons and giants, which are multiple bases, I've just got one where the number is a different colour. So for whole bases that were removed, you would just have one base removed, two bases removed, three bases removed. And I think that's all the bookkeeping that you need to do. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Um, uh, and and it, it, you, you're right that you know, these larger creatures need these big bases just to fit on the table if nothing else, right? And yeah, yeah. Well, I found that the, 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 uh, the, the dragons that I'm using just fit perfectly as a four base unit. Good. Uh, yeah. yeah. And that also sort of gets the idea that it's not some sort of, uh, that, 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 that sort of square, that frontage and depth of nasty evil big creature is about the same as that frontage and depth of you no know, sort of mid, 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 guys, mid right? lines. Yeah. I, I think that's great. So, um, uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to the game on Saturday. Um, you know, I, I, I sort of wanted to walk through the spreadsheet and make sure everybody was kind of comfortable with where we're going with all of that. And, you know, I'll keep tweaking on it, but that's the basics. So. Yeah, well, I think that's really good. I think that should, uh, that, that, that should, that should work well. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, look, I need to get to work. Two, oh, Dave, you had a question? Two, two things. Um, I think I want to add three more columns, but just like you said, people don't like to do the math. You don't want to make your point cost um, algorithm too big, but couldn't you put like three columns where I have to know that, okay, I'm going to have three dwarves missile units. Well, I got three brigades. I ignore it. I'm putting them all in the same brigade. So I've got one at 25% and one at 50%. So I would just have a drop down where I put in a one in for, you know, a, a 20, because I think you said it's either 25%, 50%, or 75% yeah. was your yeah. progression. We have a column for each. And I just have to identify how many units triggered that. So it wouldn't build in, but that way when I do the cost, it's all right there. The yeah. cost. Yeah. I'm actually not uh, sure that that's any easier than, well, anyway, I'll think about it. I'll look at it. Yeah. That yeah. Was, and the other thing is, just like you mentioned, well, okay, I can have, you know, a special unit or whatever. Do you make an algorithm for that? It's completely separate. Of, okay, if I want to have a force with three brigades, how many Hoover leaders can I have or how many, you know? Um, yeah, so that is the sheet that's missing, right? I think I can get rid of the artillery and cavalry tabs by adding a mount row yeah. but there is a table missing or a sheet missing for pointing out your heroes right that i need to add okay. um, now i think for the heroes that are going to be heroic combat bases i can probably just use the table i've got but i okay. think for um but for um, um 
but for those heroes that add, right, there's another table, another set of points. So, so that's, that's kind of a known, it's on the to-do list. I have to figure out how to point out all those heroes and special things, right? Yeah, yeah. And well, I think it's looking very good. It's looking very, uh, very flexible and, uh, and, and consistent. Well, I, I yeah. tell you, for Oz, it was a lot easier. I mean, I had a spreadsheet that I didn't expose to everybody that I was able to use to say, you know, a winky unit costs this much, right? Yeah. Because we're, we're controlling the, the background story. But for fantasy, I can't, I can't do that, right? So I had to build a system that allowed players to essentially bring what they've got, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it would be great for people to be able to know that there's a rule system that's been designed so that whatever collection figures they spent money on over the years is not going to be money wasted that they can do something with it and and bring it into this game so i think that's 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 a really good um design criteria yeah so i think you know uh, my guess is with the number of play tests you know we're doing one big play test a month and some of the guys here where i live are actually starting to game in person again so you know my guess is we'll be done with development by the summer and then a couple yeah. of months to actually write the rules and so you know, ideally, we'll be able to put this out by Christmas. Yeah, yeah that would be good. So next, so next December, we'll have a Wars of Oz annual that will um, pull together the the monthly new armies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seems like it, right? At least three. Um, I'm actually mostly looking forward to that Land of Harvest as its own force, right? So. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now I just uh, I'm just missing the corn people. And then uh, I'll be able to uh, to start to play test that, that, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the same here. So I'm going to get a, a bit of a, a looking forward picture into the rule book, which will have um, no, a, a, a harvest brigade, obviously, sort of less, less. Of yeah, I will try. I know I owe you some photographs. I will try um, as soon as I get it painted to send you a picture of the one corn person I have and the uh, and the uh, land of harvest artillery. So if you want to do a forward looking picture, right. And I know I owe you some other pictures of some of the Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. I, I know my backgrounds and terrain aren't going to look as good as yours. So they may be glaringly different in the rule book, but, but I'll get you something. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be good. That, that would be good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thank Have a good day or evening or whatever it is for you, Chris. Yeah, and, uh, yeah it's sort of, uh, lunchtime, midday. That's the first time I've seen your workshop. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Talk from home. Yes, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm busy laying out Oz at the moment. Yeah, well, I'm sure it's a, it's a big, it's a big undertaking. How, how, how far away are we on the, uh, being able to start sending out fulfillments? Are we looking at early December or, or what? Well, I think that, um, that I've, I suggested to, to Russ that if people want to pay for the postage for the book to be sent separately, then we should offer offer that to people. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just waiting for one last delivery of pieces that I'm, I'm short for, 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 for fulfillment. Oh, okay. Um, and when I get that from Russ and then we can, no, we, we can send stuff out if people are happy to pay extra postage for the rule book um realistically no the rule book isn't going to be ready for sending out until um mid-december i mean it's uh, it's a big ask that you know lots of companies um yeah sort of send their rule books out and they haven't got pictures of the majority of their range you know, of their range in i mean the thing that's been holding everything up is trying to get as much of as much eye candy of painted yeah. uh, of, of painted stuff and uh, well, you know, uh, you know, realistically, everybody who is on the pledge has the beta copy of the rules. If they get their figures, they can start playing as soon as they get stuff painted, right? And they get Abs yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it, it, I think you're going about it the right way. So I just yeah. I, the reason I asked is you know there was a guy who posted on Facebook he painted an artillery unit I think. And he said, you know, hey, they're ready to do battle whenever my fulfillment is. And so I just, I was wondering. What yeah, is I, I, I had to I kind of, think, right. Cause I, I, I had to kind of sort of sit, 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 sit on my hands and, you know, to prevent me going to the keyboard. Because I think that's the second time that he's posted a comment like that. Yeah. And the Kickstarter said very clearly 
that we were looking to fulfill it in December. So yeah, well, that's why I, I didn't think we were late or dragging our feet or anything. Yeah. I, that's why I was just a little surprised at the comment. Yeah. So, anyway. so until, until we get to the end of the December, then we're not late. But um, if Russ and I can can get, you no, know, if people are happy to pay for a second lot of postage for the book, you can send then, the figures out right then, away. Then we can you know, sort of send the figures out in the next in the, in the next week or so. Okay. Well, good guys. Thanks. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Yeah. In fact, I think what you can what you can see just behind me is actually my, my fulfillment rack of uh, of Oz figures. Oh, cool. Ah, cool. I've, I've got a sort of a, a floor to uh, a floor to ceiling unit here, which are all of the Oz codes racked out, ready to be uh, pick, picked for the Kickstarter orders. Yeah. Well, you'll need another one of those by the time Russ is done. Yeah. That's You're sculpting sure. like crazy. Yeah. Okay. All right. See you guys. All right, see ya.